this morning I could finally purchase a multi-pack of paper towels. But less than five minutes before that, I was in the aisle including such health and wellness products as medical supplies and trackers, first aid and topical treatments, oral care products, incontinence aids, and feminine hygiene stuffs. Before I pass on today's worrisome epiphany, I want to share a funny fact I discovered on my grocery store's website. When you shop by aisle in store, tampons share the health and wellness aisle with products like pill splitters, bandages, mouthwash, and men's protective underwear. When you shop by aisle online, they list the tampons in the beauty aisle with Merchandise including facial moisturizers, shampoo, and mascara. Yes, one always feels drop dead gorgeous when they are standing in line at the DMV with P string. Wait, now I get the connection. One reapplies their eye makeup after they finish the crying jag triggered by an inconveniently located ladies room. Okay, so here is my worrisome epiphany. What if people use feminine hygiene products instead of paper towels? Allow me to fill your nightmares with why anxious humans may buy up more tampons and sanitary napkins than paper towels. Almost half a century ago, my oldest and dearest friend used sanitary napkins instead of dinner napkins when her mom asked her to set the table. An easy error for a Frank G. Lindsay elementary school student who the teaching staff has not sequestered into an auditorium to watch The Story of Menstruation, the 1946 10-minute animated film created by Walt Disney Productions. In mid-March, the governor of New York spoke of experimenting with two people per one ventilator during the current COVID-19 crisis. He added that such a procedure has its challenges, but that necessity is the mother of invention. Besides my imagining, the Tampax Pearl Ultra's plastic applicator as the casing for the Teller Ulam thermonuclear bomb, what are the other uses for its soft cottony guts? Besides wiping a mouth free from spaghetti sauce, what are other uses for a sanitary napkin? I can think of at least three new ways to use a tampon. One of my pet names for a tampon is a field mouse, and I think they would make great cat toys. Shower them with a potent catnip oil spray, and you will have a very high and happy kitty. Are you familiar with the ears of a basset hound? There is an ear canal under those big floppy ear flaps and the average cotton swab is no match for these anatomical coal mine tunnels. But a tampon has the girth to clean out these channels without leaving behind a hint of waxy residue. How do you stop a nosebleed for Chuck 
close's nine foot by seven foot portrait of Philip Glass. Insert an ultra tampon into the bleeding nostril. Remember, tampons expand. One of the most utilitarian uses for a tampon is kindling. After the government lifts the social distancing order and we can resume tailgate partying, imagine the hit you will make building the fire for your hibachi using shredded tampons. Here are three inventive ways to deploy a sanitary napkin. You can channel the spirit of Florence Nightingale and use a sanitary napkin to absorb blood and hold on a wound. There have been many a manufacturer of absorbent disposable towels who claimed that their sheets suck up spills better than all comparable products. Sanitary napkins clean up spills just as well. And since their introduction into society have shown that even when wet, their strength never withers. Frozen peas make great ice packs, but if you soak a sanitary pad in water, freeze it, and place it in a resealable zipper storage bag, you have a comparable device for reducing inflammation in achy joints. Hip and knee pain are on the rise because of the increase in essential floor slithering, or EFS. What is EFS? The act of crawling on the floors of the big box stores, hoping to find a roll of paper towels set all the way to the back of one of the bottom shelves in the laundry, paper, and cleaning aisle.